We're here to talk about an essay, which by the way, you can find online just as you would any other book that discusses The Godfather, the novel and the film. But to do that, we have to give a bit of our own treatment to the subject. But actually, we can just cut to the end, even skipping over the 1969 novel for a second, and just say that the Godfather movie really is a kind of movie empire unto itself in terms of the scope, the scale, the reach, the significance it holds for every generation it touched. In some ways, whether you love it or hate it, for it being what it is, a day in the life, life in the life depiction of a mob family, it has no rival, no equal. It's sort of gangster film zero, if you will, the inflection point that touches off all other gangster films, even the ones that came before it, as anachronistic as that is when thinking about inflection points. It's not a gangster film, it's THE gangster film, so much so that we don't have the space here to discuss the myriad ways it influenced everything from fashion to production design to people's attitudes about real life mobs and on and on and on. But if you're looking for that center dot that fans out to all other gangster films, it's The Godfather. Even The Godfather 2 had to take its marching orders from The Godfather. The Godfather 3 arguably struggled because it seemed to ignore those original Godfather marching orders. With that backdrop, I found it surprising that in his essay, Puzo seems to try to normalize the work, The Godfather Collective, and bring it down to eye level as he talks about it in this making of outing like it's just another set of words he banged out into a novel and a film that, you know, some people read and saw. Okay, we do learn that Puzo is a rather cloistered, buttoned down individual, so it could be that he knows no other way to talk about his work. It could just be basic humility and good old fashioned manners that makes him come across as talking about the Godfather as that thing I wrote that time. But generally, he also seems to be trying to bring the entire endeavor back down to earth, at least in this essay. There's a lot of this happened, then that happened, with not many sensational details or even wide-eyed, gasping surprise at what a hit he had created. You may expect, oh my god, let me tell you about this book I wrote that blew up into a huge hit. But it's more, hey, I wrote a novel and people liked it, so it became a movie, you know? Pretty cool. Getting to the details a bit, I rarely make assumptions, especially about books, but I feel safe assuming this time around that if you're here, you know who all the players in The Godfather are, and I don't need to provide a character or cast list, which are the key elements in any making of account. Still, I would be remiss if I didn't just make sure to say out loud that while The Godfather definitely boosted Puzo, who had been stringing together a career in magazines and not best-selling novels, the movie was like a massive Kickstarter for the careers of most of its stars. You know the ones, Al Pacino, Robert Duvall, Talia Shire, and others. So I'll just skip ahead and say that if you're looking for Puzo in this essay to spill all the tea about those stars, or Marlon Brando, or Francis Coppola, or Diane Keaton, personally, I wanted some Abe Vigoda tea. It may not be for you because close to none of that, the tea, the background information, the juicy tangential mentions, and salacious name and tidbit drops, none of that is in the essay. It's like Puzo has never heard of these folks and doesn't even know for sure what they do for a living or that he wrote the words they gave voice to. Robert De Niro's name doesn't even come up because it can't come up since Puzo wrote this account in 1972 before De Niro showed up in 1974 in The Godfather 2 as flashback Don Vito. So the essay is short on details about the day-to-day -day of working with any of these actors. Likewise, if you're searching for a behind the scenes blow by blow of film production and novel writing with tons of snippets about filmmaking, studios, moguls, or publishing and publishing empires and wanting that ultimate expert insight, you won't find a lot of it here. I don't want to spoil too much about why, but Puzo's account gives us the impression that Puzo remained on the fringes of the entire outing. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of details about the naughtiness of pre-production of the film, the deal-making phase, difficulties in casting, the miracle of Pacino playing Michael Corleone, and various battles over deadlines and Puzo's payouts. And when I say payouts, I mean just him getting paid for his work. He also has a surprising reveal about his take on viewing the final cut of the film. 
and there's even some genuine tea about a major Hollywood player that I won't spill or spoil here. I'll let Mario Puzo spill that tea. But the essay is otherwise, by and large, a trip through Puzo's journey out of a hermit's life and onto the backlots of Hollywood. It's about how he got himself to make The Godfather, the book and the film. It's the journey of the man more than of the material. And since the time when this essay dropped in 1972, several takes on The Godfather have followed. So in a way, it's nice that Puzo distilled this essay down to the most personal viewpoint on how the artworks came to be. And it's also kind of a relief. I literally mean that. It's kind of a load off one's mind that you notice the whole time you're reading to hear this incredibly straightforward first person version of the events without some of the tension that comes with an expose or a tell all. I mean, who doesn't love a good expose or a tell all, but they can be fraught and unduly negative. And this essay isn't that. Make no mistake, Puzo can write in breezy page turner fashion and his forthright description of how and why he wrote the book and the road to the film is a delightful quick read that is less Pollyanna and more politeness, where it doesn't hurt to just be nice. If I say more, I'll spoil it. Remember, it's barely 40 pages long. But if you want a glimpse of The Godfather without any analysis about themes or social commentary or the importance of the book and the film and Pacino and Brando and Coppola and method acting and taking the film world by storm and The Godfather's 50 year relevance, and you just wanna know how the book and film came to be from the guy who brought them to you, well, mostly anyway, Coppola wrote half the screenplay, I recommend this essay. Puzo's own words, his direct account from the hotel rooms, back lots, and California beaches and tennis courts of where it all happened. Have you read The Making of the Godfather? Let everyone know in the comments section and please share what you thought of the essay or tell us what you're reading. And please like, share, and subscribe. That's all from LA and Perchance to Read today. I hope you'll come back to the channel to see what's next, to let us know what you're reading, and to see what dreams may come when you enjoy the read. Thanks for watching.